with Kindred's framework, that same data that we were getting and processing within DigiNex will be processed directly at the source in the future. So it will let our clients automate parts of compliance, part of their compliance needs, risk management or reporting without depending on an external system or transferring sensitive data, whether it's with DigiNex or someone else. Hey, welcome back to this online business briefing brought to you by smallcapvoice.com where we shine a spotlight on some of the smartest and freshest plays out there in the market today. And we're excited to be welcoming back to the show DigiNex. You can find them at their website, diginex.com. That's D-I-G-I-N-E-X.com. They're traded on the NASDAQ under the ticker symbol DGNX. And today we're going to be joined by Lorenzo Romano. He is their head of M&A and strategic development. And why are we talking to Lorenzo this week? Well, I'm going to let you know in a second, but first let's welcome him to the show. Lorenzo, thanks so much for taking time to speak with us today. Thanks, Stuart. It's great to be here. <laughs> well, it's great to have you here because there was some big news for listeners and viewers. Let me give you the dateline. It's November 6, 2025, and you'll see that the company signed an MOU for an acquisition of Kindred OS. Now, there's a lot of information in that press release. Use that ticker symbol to pull it up, DGNX. But Lorenzo, before we get there, if you would, let's get a refresher and a reminder on who DigiNex is and the playing field that you play on. Thank you, Stuart. So yeah, at DigiNex, I lead the M&A and as you mentioned, the strategic development uh, across the group. That means looking not only at technology companies, but also advisory firms, other strategic partnerships that would strengthen how we deliver value value to clients globally, bringing new verticals, new clients, new markets, or new technology. In order to achieve this, every acquisition or partnership we pursue is designed to address at least one of our three core verticals. We aim to make compliance smarter through better data collection and analysis. That's the input part, if you want, and treatment of information. We also want to make sustainability more efficient through accurate reporting and interpretation. And finally, we aim to make governance and information stronger and useful by helping companies use their data, but in a smart way and ultimately responsibly. So when talking about using data responsibly and anticipate regulation, this MOU that you mentioned with Kindred is a great example. It opens a new dimension for us in edge AI and trusted automation, expanding both our technological and strategic reach. Well, so now we see the vision of the company and we also see how Kindred fits in this vision. And you just called it a new dimension for DigiNex. So let's talk about the timing then, because I can see it because I've been working with your company for a month now and we can kind of see the news flow. Really, this edge AI movement is great, but let's talk about the timing of why you move into edge AI at this moment. Stuart, it's a new dimension because we are at the start of a real transformation. AI is no longer niche, it's everywhere. Even people who aren't naturally drawn to technology use AI daily through chatbots, agentic assistants, and creative tools. We see them every day online. Some compare, I've heard that, this moment to the rise of blockchain or crypto, which were revolutionary in their own way. But AI is different in its scale. It has reached the mainstream, and that's what makes it transformative. With that mainstream and industrial reach, comes the need for governance. And uh, regulators across Europe, the US, Asia are tightening AI frameworks. You've heard probably the EU AI Act or GDPR. New data and privacy rules are emerging worldwide because there's this concern around the AI. Now, coming back to what I was mentioning earlier, that's where this edge AI fits perfectly. It allows intelligence to run locally inside an organization's own infrastructure. So raw data never leaves the secure environment of the company. And it's not only about privacy and data control, it's also about efficiency because processing happens where the data is generated. So reducing energy use and the latency created by the constant cloud communication with remote server. In short, we see Edge AI as a very credible answer to the next wave of compliance trust and other performance challenges that uh, we face. Well, then let's break it down a little bit further for our viewers. Why does Edge AI, at, what does it actually look like in practice? And, and you're obviously implementing it, Kindred OS. So how does it differ from cloud-based AI as most people are more familiar with the cloud-based AI model? Well, Stuart, that's a great question. And, and I can tell you it's, it's one that I have to answer very often these past few days. Here's a simple way to visualize it. 
through three layers, okay? So at first, you're at the edge where the user or device is sitting. An AI model runs locally on a laptop, a tablet or industrial controller, you know, analyzing data where it's created. So that was the first layer. Because these are lightweight or specialized models, we call them SML compared to the LLM. So it's called small language model versus the large language model that we know, you know, with uh, OpenAI, ChatGPT, etc. They're optimized because they're small and they have to be small. They're optimized for specific domains, such, for example, education, healthcare, automotive maintenance, you name it. Then that, so that was the first layer. Then you have the node level. These local devices are sharing anonymized insights or parameters updates through a regional hub, so the node. This allows the system to learn collectively without exposing any raw data. And finally, so we had the first, the second, and finally, you have the third layer, which is the cloud, the one that we know, the heavier training and aggregated analytics that are happening periodically to refine the global model. Sensitive data never leaves the local environment and only the model improvements are exchanged in the end. Then backwards, the updated models then cascade back down to the nodes and to the devices, keeping the entire system current and consistent. So you really have this kind of upward stream from confidential data to the, to the, to the cloud. And then once it has learned, it goes back and populated back to the, the local devices. So it's really a hybrid architecture. The edge handles real-time analysis and decision-making, while the cloud manages scale coordination and long-term optimization. The result, in the end, it's faster, safer, and more compliant, which is ultimately the goal for uh, compliance, you know, and, uh, and uh, sustainability. And that's exactly what Kindred's H1 environment enables. It's based on an open source model optimized for low-spec hardware, as I mentioned before, so it can run on a standard tablet or laptop. You don't need a powerful device or a computer, powerful computer. You don't need the latest iPhone or whatever Android, Samsung you, 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 you like. So that's, that's the power, I would say, of Edge AI. It gives the companies speed and security at the same time, ideal for those that need to keep control of their data and want, in the end, to comply with uh, existing or obviously the coming standards of privacy. Well, Lorenzo, in this interview, you talked about the vision of Diginex. And earlier we spoke with Mark Blick, the CEO of Diginex, and he talked about the ecosystem that is Diginex and the ecosystem that has created by Diginex all around it. So where does Kindred OS and this move fit into that ecosystem. Although I think you're doing a really good job of kind of showing us that so far. This is, a, I want to get a little more color in this area. Well, Kindred adds a new layer of capability to our existing sustainability and compliance system. So Diginex, Diginex sorry, already captures and structure ESG and regulatory data. That's how the company was built originally. So report ESG reporting, so environmental, social, and governance reporting. With Kindred's framework, that same data that we were getting and processing within Diginex will be processed directly at the source in the future. So it will let our clients automate parts of compliance, part of their compliance needs, risk management or reporting without depending on an external system or transferring sensitive data, whether it's with Diginex or someone else. Over time, this should create a new vertical on its own for Diginex called, we would call edge compliance. So kindreds by, by Diginex. But it will also create what I call the horizontal layer that will enhance every product we offer. Our ultimate goal is to build systems that can learn from data, whether it's with us or with clients, without ever exposing it. Helping organizations turn information into action still and while staying fully compliant. So there's an insulation aspect that you're speaking of, and there's the process of it. And where are you in this process as you stand today? And how do you see it developing in the short and medium term? Well, following the signature of the MOU uh, recently, so we've started our due diligence. So both on the technical side and commercial side. On the technical side, we're working closely with Kindred to define the key parameters that will strengthen their platform during this phase and ensure, especially it aligns with Diginex standards for security, scalability, and performance. Then in parallel on the commercial side, we're exploring the most promising opportunities where we could achieve an early win together. And we're also identifying, and this is interesting, unique environments 
where the platform could actually be tested in extreme situations to validate its local processing feature. But we'll communicate more about those once, we, once they materialize. This will be interesting. But what's important is that we want to build this properly in a measured and disciplined approach. If done right, this type of platform and processing could become a new benchmark, honestly, for responsible reporting in, in our industry, but overall. So, Lorenzo, I'll finish our interview with this and wrap it all up in a bow for me, if you will. How would you summarize what the partnership represents for Diginex, the company, and, and also for the broader AI landscape? Well, Stuart, this partnership is a step towards the future of compliance and data management, as I've mentioned a few times. It, it's a new way of operating with AI and it's a new way of operating for DGNX. We're moving from a, a model of AI that relies entirely on the cloud to AI that lives securely on local devices, private, that are explainable, always under the organization's control. And it's really, for, for, for us at DGNX, it's really not about the AI hype, you know. So AI will continue to evolve on its own. Look, I mean, look at where we are today after two years of generative, generative AI. I think my first, uh, my f subscription to ChatGPT dates from early 2023 and, and, and look at today with the evolution in, in just a short of two years. But for us, it's about building a trust layer that will be truly useful to our clients. So using AI in a responsible and efficient way forward, you know, and Kindred definitely could be an important part of that journey uh, for DigiNex. Well, I'm going to have my producer put up some of the links right now, but of course I gave you the main link to the company website, just diginex.com. We're speaking to Lorenzo Romano. Again, he is the head of M&A and strategic development for Diginex. You can socialize with the company on X, aka Twitter, whatever you want to call it. We are Diginex. And again, I want you to visit us here at smallcapvoice.com. Go down in the profile for this actual interview. We'll give you all the links to socialize with this company. Ask us questions for our upcoming interview. But as for this interview, that's a wrap, Lorenzo. And thank you so much for your time here today. You not only told us about this move for your company, you refreshed us on the business model and the ecosystem of DigiNex, but you also educated us on what we've seen evolve here from generative AI to edge AI and where it's going to go in the future. None of us have a crystal ball, but it's exciting times for you, your company, Company and here at Small Cap Voice for us watching you. So good luck for you and DigiNex for the rest of 2025 and great thanks to you and your team in 2026 and thanks for making time for us. Thank you very much, Stuart. And uh, I hope, yeah, we all learn, learn something in the process, but get familiar with the uh, Edge AI. It's uh, something for the future, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And this press release that we brought up and we spoke about today, I gave you the date line, the ticker symbol. Pull that press release up. Learn more about Kindred OS, of course. Give us your questions here for Lorenzo Romano. This is Stuart Smith saying thanks so much for tuning in.